nearly 90 years on the water, this thing was starting to rust out in spring leaks, and eventually the U.S. Coast Guard shut the exhibit down. At which point, the Lahaina Restoration Foundation was sort of at a loss as to what to do with this ship. It was sort of sinking and slip on the north end of Lahaina Harbor, and they didn't really have the funds to remove it from the water. So they approached the Atlanta submarines and offered to sell it to us. So we purchased this 120 foot long two masted scooter for the grand total of $1. Well, $1.04, don't forget sales tax. We then spent nearly a quarter of a million dollars in three years doing environmental impact statements, site locations, and cleaning the vessel before we were able to bring it out here to its current location and sink it in a controlled sink on December 13th, 2005. We sank the Carthaginian to serve as an artificial reef. It provides a few things that a natural reef provides for fish. It provides shelter. They can hide in various rooms on board, like in the wheelhouse or down in the hold. It provides a food source in the form of the algae that grows on the outside of the ship. And it also provides an area for corals to grow. Corals can't grow in sand. They need something solid to adhere to before the coral pol is our its calling. As you can see, there's a bunch of corals going on the Carthaginian right now. Take a look at the corals on the Carthaginian, that'll give you an idea of the rate of growth of coral. That's seven and a half years worth of coral growth that you see there. Alright, so we're going to make a turn around the bow of the Carthaginian. As we do, I'm going to try and point out a real cool fish you folks. Now the bow sprit, the pointy end on the boat, if you take a look at the top of it, there's a ring. Right in the middle of that ring is a green blob, and that green blob is actually a fish. It's kind of difficult to spot one of the best camouflage predators that we have out here. This is a frogfish. All right, you see that ring right there, that green blob, that's its belly. You can see its tail is facing up and its head's facing down. So that's a frogfish, and that's a real cool fish. Uh, it'll sit real still like it is right now. It's an anglerfish. It has a little lure that'll dangle right in front of its mouth. The smaller fish will go to inspect that lure, and that frogfish will pounce for it, open up its mouth real wide, and gobble that smaller fish down. Let's see it right there. See that circle? Oh, the is one of the fastest striking predators in the ocean. It can strike its prey in one one hundredth of a second. It's also one of the worst swimming fish that you'll ever see. If you ever watch one of these things free swimming, it's one of the most awkward swimming hey, fish. They don't have swim bladders, so they can't compensate their buoyancy. They're negatively buoyed. They're always going to sink unless they're holding on to something or actively swimming. Spectral fins are a lot like claws. They'll hold on to something like that. Smaller prey. Oh, your yellow spe uh, sea sponge. Coast Guard really? requires us to sink it in an area that yeah. will be safely accessible to scuba divers. Careful. Under if there's any sharks. Divers can't go too deep for too long. The deeper down you go with scuba gear, the less bottom time you have. This is due to the buildup of nitrogen that you get in your blood from breathing compressed air at death. If you get too much nitrogen built up in your system, you don't properly decompress and off gas. What happens is it'll fall out of solution into your blood, basically forming tiny tiny bubbles of nitrogen in your flesh. It's a very serious illness. known as decompression sickness or the bends. It's pretty easy to avoid with proper training and planning of your dives. In this step, you get around 20 minutes or a half hour bottom time, depending on how conservatively you like to dive and what tables you're going by. This Carthaginian is a great dive if you get the chance to do it. I know the Carthaginian not too long ago. Dropped right down into the hold and Inside the hold, I found two white tip reef sharks. <laughs> Alright, so we got the uh, sub turned around. We're going to do another pass by the bow. So, port side, take a look out for this frogfish again. Right on the bowsprit is a 
Oh, there's another one right here on these uh, horizontal lines, too. Uh, there's a horizontal line and a vertical chain. Right where they make a Y, you can see there's a second frogfish right there. Looks like there's a third one over here on the farthest line up on the bowsprit. So we got frogfish all over the place. The easiest one to spot is probably the one right inside the uh, hoop. Right in the middle of that green blob, that's the belly of the frogfish. Now the reason why the frogfish are called frogfish is because they oftentimes will live in real shallow water. And if they're uh, waiting on something like they do, and they hold on to something, waiting for the smaller fish to come up. If the tide drops out from below them, and they end up getting out of the water, they can actually stay alive through a whole tidal cycle. We also got a large chunk of fish over here on the port side. That's the uh, long slender fish. We call it trumpet fish because they open their mouth really wide. It looks like the horn of a trumpet. You notice he has this uh, tail up and his head down, that's his hunting position. They'll go vertical like that, wait for a smaller fish to swim underneath them. Go dart forward, snatch up a smaller fish. Oftentimes people will confuse the trumpet fish with the eel. It's actually more closely related to a seahorse. You can imagine a seahorse if you grab it by its face and its tail and float it in a straight line. Pretty much have a trumpet fish. Or a very upset seahorse. There's also a bunch of uh, Wyandisil's damsels. These are the little blackfish, white sides. Kind of looks like a pulled apart Oreo with fins. If you come down here with your scooby gear on and start poking around the reef, that fish will come out and start chirping at you. Actually, here in our water, making little chirping noises. These little yellow fish with a black dot at the base of their tail are millet sea butterfly fish. In Hawaii, those are called Lao Willy Willy, but the fish that looks like a Willy Willy leaf. Similar to the Lao Willy Willy Nuku Nuku Oi Oi, Nuku Nuku Oi Oi part, meaning uh, the long nose. So they both look kind of like Willy Willy leaf, but one has a long nose, one doesn't. Starboard side, look at you can see the wheelhouse and the mass of the Carthaginian laying across the top. These masks fell over about two years ago. They stayed up for almost five years. However, we had a strong current coming through one evening, knock both the masks over one bag. Also on the starboard side, you'll see the line that's not really attached to anything other than the Carthaginian. That's a telltale line. Those lines are used to determine the strength and direction of the current over down here. Pretty important for our pads to know. So we are at a 120 foot long vessel. Uh, I'm 
I'm hearing that we do have the uh, yellow more Jamori Hill over on the port side, right by this tiny little patch of coral. Okay, so he's on the right side of the main portion of that tiny plate or that tiny patch of green. This is a yellow margin mori eel, and if you take a look, you'll notice that he's open and closing his mouth. What he's doing is he's gulping water. By gulping water, he forces that water over his gill plates, allowing him to absorb oxygen into his bloodstream. Right, so we're going to see if we can get a good view of this eel. All right, so start side here. We're going to try to turn this around, get a good view of this yellow margin more eel. That's a fairly good size. I'd say that was probably about three and a half feet, maybe, based on the size of his head. 